We have a whole group of people out there who are gaining the weight back and who are stuck at the highest dose of terzepatide and nothing's going well. They're regaining the adipose tissue and they're just waiting for retitrutide, thinking that's going to solve the problem. But then I'm even more concerned because if you have glucagon agonism going and you're not hitting the gym, if you are hitting the gym, you're going to be put in more of an anabolic state. If you're not hitting the gym, you're going to be put in even more of a catabolic state. Am I, am I over the target here or am I way off? Or am I making uh, sense? <laughs> well, well you're, you're making sense and you're trying to think your way through it. And it's, it's awesome. I, and I, I, I commend you on, on, on your thought process and you're in the right places. But I think what you have to you have to look again as it's not one way or the other. It's if we're working on improving efficiency of the cell, we are then enabling it's, it's a modulator. It's not a, and it works on demand. Okay. Um, GL, GLP ones, they work on, it's why you don't get into hypoglycemic problems. Um, with glucose, with GLP ones, it's GLP ones work more. It, it's an even, it's a more precise type of peptide that works on demand, and it works as a modulator. And so, think of it this way: if if I'm working on improving the efficiencies of the cell, meaning um, its ability to do what switch from AMPK into mTOR, mTOR back into AMPK, it, it has to have that flexibility, right? right. It's got and it loses that flexibility when it loses that metabolic advantage to use like fat oxidation when it needs it or protein catabolism, which is something that occurs um, to, to make up sometimes. This is where you get into issues with people not knowing how to utilize these appropriately as, as the healthcare providers, where they push things too fast. They don't realize that, um, that yeah, the, the cell is getting efficient and it may, in order to provide more glucose or to, to do things for um, enhancing what's already happening with fat oxidation, it may it may want to catabolize like glutamine from the muscle, uh, you know, to, to utilize protein because that's kind of what's happening. It's, it's getting another source of glucose. And so this is why it becomes so important to understand. And you're right in, in, in at least initially with the initial GLP ones, we realized a while back that you had to have, because you were, you know, because you were stimulating, changing metabolism in not just improving fat oxidation and so forth, but actually you were causing some calorie restriction because of appetite suppression. That was like a double whammy, right? You're, you're improving metabolism from the metabolic aspects of changing truly fat oxidation, which just improves a, uh, ATP and NADH production and efficiencies of how the cell uses glucose, fatty acids, and, and proteins, but you're also, you're double whamming it with this appetite suppression that's further calorie restricting the body. So you've got some extra influences that you got to account for and you got to make up for that. And, and so you, you're right in thinking initially with the GLP-1 and mTOR, well, gosh, protein, we know in particular leucine, has an influence on inducing protein synthesis and then exercise itself in particular resistance training as another factor to you know increasing the production of the mTOR state activation and what are we trying to do retain muscle so it's not being catabolized and also to potentially even improve muscle protein synthesis, which you can do absolutely just with GLP ones by themselves, if you understand that. So it's, a, it's an understanding of the mechanisms and then also understanding that you can take advantage of those mechanisms with providing the proper stimulus. So that's where kind of exercise, strength training, protein synthesis kind of made a real difference in providing a much better environment for your patients to benefit from training, um, especially if they were 
you know, especially if you're using low doses and um, these aren't people that are achieving weight loss, but the weight loss definitely is a different place in, in understanding that. And, and we learned all that a long time ago with calorie restriction and, and, and what that really emphasizes because everybody loses muscle with calorie restriction. Right. What happens with the GLP ones is just people are using such super physiologic doses without really compensating and trying to do it too quickly and just not understanding the, the mechanisms there.